from morning with fasting, prayer, down to evening. Then you come to church to deliver the word and people are not here. They are not here to receive. Then you see them gather on Sunday for what? Let me tell you something. Many of you come on Sunday to show your cloth. You come on, you come on Sunday, you wake up 5 o'clock, dress up, paint your face, knock, knock your perfume. Then you sit in such a conspicuous manner. Let them just see your cloth. Mind yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Appear here on Wednesday and ground your life. Christians are identified by the intensity of their work with God. The intensity of their work with God. They, are, they, they don't treat meetings with God with levity. They don't treat it lightly. Don't let God allow you go through battles so you value what he has provided. Are you hearing me now? Don't, don't, don't let, there is what you go through. They will share the grace you are still in church. They would you go and say, no, I, I, I want to pray all night in church today. Because, Mbokin and me. Are you understand what I'm saying? You get what we do you. You won't leave church. He said, Pastor, can we do second service on Wednesday? You alone will stay and do it. Am I talking to somebody here today? Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me try to give us some of the reasons why people miss or rather what the kind of people or what happened to the people who miss Bible study. This is my own personal research. My own personal research over the years. Because just about anybody can go to church on Sunday. Any thief, any criminal can wake up, usually when they steal, they don't steal on Sundays. Because it's church going there. You, the believer, who is serious, you come with the criminal, all of you come to church. And all of you also don't come to the next Sunday. What makes you different? What makes you different? Hallelujah. I am concerned, very concerned for the quality of life many of us have. As your pastor, I am highly concerned. Because I know myself. When I was just a normal brother serving the Lord, I know how much. There was a time in Calabar State Housing Estate. I used to move around on other days in the estate looking for a church that is open. So I can feed myself. I am not joking. No. I, move, I move around the estate looking for anywhere I can find a church. Let me just take something. I moved till I moved to Ikaika Ukwa Market. Then I enter one church. I sat for a while, put on my discernment. When I hear what they were saying, I took myself and I ran away. I said, let's, let's listen to the prophet. I thought they were reading one of the prophets in the Bible. We were reading one time, I just carried myself and I went home and rested. I was looking for church. So if I could be like that, then it means it's either you have hunger, you don't realize it. You don't realize you have a hunger. And so you just sit back and do nothing about it. That is very dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Hallelujah. The, um, the marked difference between people who just worship God, you know, in church only on Sundays from those who go the extra mile. It's a marked difference. Very unique difference from people who go the extra mile to a midweek service, to a Bible study. And even if there's a service on Friday, those who still manage to go. I know these people in God's house of refuge. They, those who even manage to come on Wednesday. They come on Wednesday and they sign agreement. No more other church. If you do any extra meeting on Thursday, Friday, you're on your own. Please, you people. Repent. In Jesus' name. I run down the ones within the first service. One, Bible study makes you wiser than the devil. Makes you wiser than the devil. The Bible says five were wise. Five were foolish. What makes them wise? The extra they took. The extra oil. The Bible says let Satan take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 2 verse 11. Let Satan take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant 
of his devices. The scripture didn't say, my people are destroyed for the powerfulness of the devil. No. As soon as you get born again, you are no longer within the reach of Satan. But Satan can access you through your ignorance. He can access you. He says, let Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. The question, if you write that to today's church, is the church not ignorant? Very ignorant. Hallelujah. He said, my people are destroyed. He said, my people are not the people of the world. My people are destroyed. So the only thing that destroys a believer is ignorance. They are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Praise God. I said, praise God. In God, whatever you will get, you get it by knowledge. Whatever you don't know, you can manifest in the kingdom. Did you hear what I said? We are talking about divine healing. You don't know about it. You don't know it. You can't manifest it. People may pray for you and you may be healed for a while. But you go back because you will operate according to the level of your knowledge. You shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Make you free. So the truth you don't know cannot work for you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about today? Second Peter chapter, chapter 1 verse 2. Give us that scripture. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace, peace be multiplied. It has to be communicated through knowledge. Through the knowledge of God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two. To miss Bible study it is to have a high propensity to backslide. High propensity to backslide. In fact, when we say backslide now, most of the times, you know, you think we're talking about the ultimate backsliding. As in, you have really gone back to law, you're not drinking alcohol, you are carrying women, you are stealing and thiefing and all that. No, those ones are ultimate manifestation. But the backsliding had already started. Whenever you see somebody backslide ultimately like that, they started longest time ago. They started longest time ago. And what is backsliding? Backsliding is doing less than you did yesterday. Yesterday you prayed for one hour. Today you pray five minutes. You are backsliding. That's the truth. You are going backward. He said to the Ephesian church in Ephesians chapter 2. He said, I have somewhat against you. That you have left your first love. You have left your first love. So backsliding happens in the body of Christ every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Let's get to number three. Number three. A Bible study attender has higher quality of Christian life than those who go to church only on Sundays. A Bible study attender has a higher quality of Christian life than those who go to church only on Sundays. Acts chapter 11 verse 26 and Acts eleven twenty six. And when he found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year, they assembled us when Barnabas found Saul or Paul. He brought him to Antioch. And that a whole year, they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people for a whole year. That is every day for one year. They were teaching and receiving the word. And the disciples were called Christians. First in Antioch, what made the people around them call them Christians? They saw Jesus in these people's lives. How did Jesus manifest in their life like that? These people had enough word till they manifested Jesus. So the word Christian was actually a mockery. These Christians, people were behaving like that man that was crucified. That Christ. Because they saw them manifest the image of God. How did that come about? By steady word every day for one year. I'm talking about 365 days. The Antioch brethren were receiving word from Barnabas and Paul. Hallelujah. So you want to compare your Christian life with those people? With this kind of life we have? It doesn't work like that though. Many of you, if I mention a name in the Bible now, you ask, is that in the Bible? Where is it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. It tells you how far you are. Am I talking to somebody today? How far you are from the scheme of things. Praise God. You are not answering me. I say, praise the Lord. 
<laughs> there is a dimension of teaching that you need to receive in order to experience the kind of change that you expect in your life. To experience the quality of Christian life that you are believing for. There's a level of word that needs to enter inside of you. Are you hearing me? This also borders around the quality of ground that your heart represents. What's the quality among the seeds that were sown? What is the quality of ground? Luke chapter 8 verse 8. Luke chapter 8 verse 8. Look at what it says. And, and all that fell on good ground. Look at it. Good ground. And sprang up and bore fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried. He that had ears to hear, let him hear. The first ground was wayside ground. The second ground was stony ground. The third one was thorny ground. This one was good ground. And you cannot be a good ground and not bear fruit. Because many of us lack fruit. We lack, let, let a small test come to you now. You know how test comes? Test comes by the offense of somebody. Or by some disappointment. Or by, or by some delay. Or something. Let, watch, let's watch your reaction. Matthew chapter 7 verse 17 to 18. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. So when word is lacking in your life, your tree, you the tree, become bad. Because you will begin to bring forth bad fruit. Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And you know every tree by its fruit, not by its leaves. You know there is a very strong resemblance between, between Afang leaf and Editan leaf. I will ask her those days. I will come back and I will see leaf. I said, which, which leaf is this? He said, don't worry. I want to know whether it's Afang or Editan so I can, you know, prepare myself. Because I just couldn't, I couldn't differentiate. It's only in the tasting you will not know who is who in Africa. He said, don't worry. I said, my friend, tell me this. And my friend goes, what are you talking about? He said, don't worry. When I cook it, you will know. No. So you can't use leaf to know a tree. Trees are known by fruit. Hallelujah. Matthew 12, 33. I don't make the tree good. And his fruit good. Or else make the tree corrupt. And his fruit corrupt. But the tree is known by his fruit. Is known by his fruit. And let me tell you. If you don't see the fruit of God. The fruit of Christianity. The fruit of, of righteousness. The fruit of the spirit manifests in your life. You are backsliding. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have gone far. And that's how it starts. All of people begin to quote the mercy of God. Begin to quote the grace of God. Stay there and be quoting God's grace. Hallelujah. People will not know you by your tongues. They will not know you by your songs. They will know you by your fruit. They will know you by your tongue. Some of us, when we speak tongues in some places, we... We are a mockery to the body of Christ. A mockery because when you speak, people look at this one too, they follow speak. Because you are not representing. You don't represent God. It's not by your singing. Those are leaves. Jesus wants to see fruit on the tree. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 20 says, Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. By what? By their fruit, you shall know them. And how are fruits born? Luke chapter 8 verse 15. How are fruits born? Luke 8 15. But that, that on the good tree, on the good ground rather, are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So how do you bear fruit? Number one, work on your heart. Your heart must be honest. Your heart must be honest. Now that I am not in church, what am I doing? On that Wednesday when you are not in church, what are you doing? Your heart must be honest. 
He said also the heart must be good. Good heart. Your heart must be honest. Your heart must be good. And your heart must have the ability to keep the word. He says in an honest and good heart. Having heard the word. Keep it. You are able to retain the word of God in your heart. That's how people bear fruit. In fact, they say with patience. With patience. Hallelujah. And a very good way to keep the word in your heart is by consistent hearing. By consistent hearing. By consistent hearing. By consistent hearing. Romans 10, 17. He says, To them faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing and hearing. Not just hearing. Hearing and hearing. And the keeping of the word produces fruit in your life. Isaiah 37 verse 31. Isaiah 37, 31. See, they that are escaped of the... And, and, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall t- again take root downward and bear fruit upward. So your fruit bearing is root based. Your fruit bearing is a consequence of your root. When your root is shallow, you won't bear fruit. Because the root must go deep for fruit to show upward. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So the reason why people don't, don't produce fruit is because the word never gets to stay long enough in their heart. The word never gets to stay long enough in their heart. People who stop on sun, at Sunday, Sunday, worship will never get to enjoy quality Christian life. Your, your, do you know why God says we should come to church? So that he can assist your personal effort. That's your effort at praying, your effort at studying, your effort at having a walk with God. When you come to church, you are assisted. Sometimes you read something in the Bible, you didn't understand it. That day you came to church, pastor is explaining it. Ah, ah, that's what I read. Oh, okay, 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 okay. While I was in secondary school, I went to church. I went to church because, you know, I was suspended from, from boarding house and all that. So I would go to church. I go to Bible study. And this, my pastor... Of Christ for the world that time in the Quran. We teach and teach. One day he taught. And as I was going out. I had to look at my leg if it was touching the ground. Because I was walking in the air. I was walking. I had to look. Pause and look at my leg. Okay, it's touching the ground. I didn't feel the ground. The word, I was so hungry. I told myself, when will I study the Bible like this man? That's what. The church we went that time was bench. Oh, not that poor sitting and sleeping. Sleep in that church. Your leg will be up, your back will be on the ground. <laughs> you no, know, one day you will come to church, let's we'll remove all this stuff, we'll put bench. <laughs> I'm telling you, sleep there, you will see something. You sit up straight, man. You can't sleep. If you sleep, sleep forward. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. (laughs) Praise God forever. When you come to church, you hear the word, you want to, you want to pattern the word after, after the way, when you study the Bible, you want to think of your pastor. How did he study and get it? Me too, I want to get it. That's how, why we come, we get challenged. We get provoked, we get stirred up. And everybody goes back home. They want to study the Bible to understand it the way pastor understands it. Number four. Research shows that those who miss Bible studies are regular customers at prayer houses, spiritualist homes, and demonic counselors. Those who miss Bible they are customers. They are the ones that they will tell you Go here. This man is powerful. He's going to help you. Why wouldn't you go? You are word empty. You are an empty can. So wherever they tell you to go, you go. Ah. They go here. These people used to help people get pregnant. And then you go. Then they give you manana to drink. That's they give you. They give you concoction. You know what they call manana? Sorry if you don't know. The kind of cream made from coconut, 
Is it eh? palm kernel? Oh, so you know. <laughs> they give you to drink. The thing they give you to drink is sm- smell more than gutter. Please, you don't want to come to Bible study. Drink, drink dirty. You drink it, then they will do things, then they will tell you you are pregnant. They say, where is the scan? They will carry one picture from textbook and show you that that's your scan. Praise God. See First Samuel chapter 26, sorry, chapter 28, verse 6 and 7. First Samuel chapter 28, verse 6 and 7. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, by Urim, or by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman who has a familiar spirit at Endor. That's Saul. And God was not speaking to him again. God silenced Saul. So Saul sought after a witch. That woman with familiar spirit was a witch from Endor. So when you don't hear God, you will seek after familiar spirits. You will go after things. You will go after strange spirits. Hallelujah. Saul could not hear God anymore, so he resorted to familiar spirits. This woman was a witch. And that was the last time Saul heard anything because he he told the woman to conjure the spirit of Samuel. Now, I don't know whether that was the real Samuel or a fake Samuel that came up. I'm still researching. But that somewhere that came up put a curse on Saul. And that was the last we heard of Saul. But let's see the experience of Paul the Apostle in Acts chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. Acts of the Apostles chapter 16, verse 16 to 18. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying, the same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. So Paul had from a spirit of divination and was able to discern the spirit. Listen. When word level is high, discernment will be high. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When your word level is high, your discernment will be high. Because uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing us under the soul from the spirit. And it's a discerner. The word of God itself is a discerner. So the much word you have in you determines your level of discernment. So Paul rebuked the devil, even though the prophecy was correct. He clear you. Because some of you go to some place and they describe your mother, describe your father, describe everything. Oh, and you now believe. Any the rubbish they tell you from there, you now hear. But your spirit is not working. Your spirit is not discerning that this is wrong. That's terrible. Terrible. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul, a man of word and a man of faith, he quickly discerned that the spirit was false and rebuked it, regardless of the correctness of the prophecy. This is how worded believers act. That's how worded believers act and react. They operate more people who don't, who don't come for Bible study, who are not worded enough, operate from the victim's mentality. They are constantly victims. They are ruled by superstition. Superstition rules them. And when you are superstitious, you will believe everything. You will be gullible. You will be vulnerable. You will be gullible. You will be vulnerable. It is from people like these that spiritualists and false prophets make their money. People who don't have word inside them. They tell you, bring afang with meat, cow leg, and Shaki, and a bow of Eba, with 50,000, with a live goat. And they will add one ridiculous thing, with the eye of a flying serpent. And they say, you can't get it, give us money to buy it, 20,000. 
Then they give you Psalm 119 to read while they are eating the Eba. And they told you, if I finish this Eba before you finish Psalm, your problem is over. If while I'm still eating this Eba, Psalm, Psalm finish, ah, your case is tough. People, wicked. Then you start, you are the one who has problems. You are the one who is reading the Psalm. And they are eating. And sense does not enter your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> These people possess such quality of spirit that they can hardly discern between good and evil. They can't discern anything because of the inappropriate spiritual build-up. Everyone and everything seems to be pursuing them. Everything is pursuing you. He said, my eyes shaking, my left eye shake. What's that? Somebody is calling my name. Thunder blow. What is the meaning of that one now? I was out here one time. It was about to rain and thunder just hit like this. I was just by my car. And one brother just did I said, come here, come here, come here. What did you just do now? He said, Pastor, no. Pastor, no. I said, no, what did you just do now? So that will prevent the thunder from touching you. You follow and think it now. Praise God. A child is having hiccup. <laughs> He's having to give the child water to drink. They cut thread and put on the head. That thread didn't do it. They cut another one. They cut another one. With all the Bible you are reading. You see the child hair as if it's the child is doing rag day. Thread all over the place. To pastitious living. Somebody shout hallelujah. And then be more worded. It will be on the advantage. He said, let Satan take advantage of you. Satan is an advantage taker when you are ignorant. Let's, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. Let Satan take advantage of you. Let's, or you are not ignorant of his devices. Let's look at number 6 and close. Oh my God. Fine. Number 6. People who do not attend Bible studies usually have one sickness one disease, pain, or affliction, or the other, that refuses to go away. They have one sickness, one disease, one pain, one affliction, that just refuses to go away. Why? Because there are things that cannot go until you hear something. It is hearing that brings healing. Luke chapter 5 verse 15, and Luke chapter 6 verse 17. Luke 5 15. Let's look at it. He said, But so much the more when there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him of their infirmities. So if you if you if you look at the word hear and heal, one letter makes them different. Remove R and put L, you have heal. Remove L and put R, you, you have here. They can, even the people, the multitude, they knew. They had studied Jesus and they knew that if you can hear him, you will be healed. If you can hear him, you will be healed. Do you know that there are many people who come to church who had all manner of sicknesses till the sickness left? You, you, you did not know. You, you were just sitting down and one day you remember that ah, I used to be sick. Oh. How do you think it left? The word of God doesn't come just to excite our brain and our minds. It comes to heal our bodies. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word and his word did what? Heal them of their disease and deliver them from their destruction. Luke chapter 6 verse 17. Luke 6, 7, 6 verse 17. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem... And from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They came to hear and to be healed. So if you can hear, like in midweek service, if you can hear, look, there is a difference between miracle and healing. Miracles are instant. Pam, it does happen. We see it a lot happen here. But healings are gradual. God can decide that he wants to heal you not to do a miracle. So each day you come, he's touching it. 
Each day you call me, he's touching it. And one day you wake up, the thing is not there. And you, will, you, you would have forgotten because the way he took it away, you didn't notice. Praise God. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> this means when you stop hearing, sickness begins to ravage your body. When, so hearing doesn't just heal you. Hearing also keeps the sickness away. It keeps them away. Keeps them at bay. They don't have access. Because hearing is continuously taking place. Hallelujah. Let's see this and close. Luke chapter 5 verse 17. I don't want to make the mistake I made last Sunday. I thought the service was so close by 10.30. And it came to pass. On a certain day. Everybody look at this scripture. And it came to pass. On a certain day. As he was teaching. That there were Pharisees and doctors. Of the law sitting by. Which were come out of every town of Galilee. And Judea and Jerusalem. And see what was the next reading. There. Let's all read it together. One, two, go. And the power of the Lord. Was present to heal them. When was the power present to heal? While he was teaching. While he was teaching. One time. One time, I'm told our brother, he may, he may be in church now. I'm still trusting God for him. Can you imagine? Eh? We're in Bible study here. And the Lord gave me a word. Some, first, I thought it was someone that has problem with nose. So I called some people came out and I prayed for them. Holy Ghost said no. He said somebody, so I said, what is it now? He now said the person is one that cannot smell. Hey, I laughed first in my mind. Somebody here cannot smell. Then I realized they don't write it on the face. I gathered courage and I called. Someone here that cannot smell. You don't smell. Who is you? The usher who was catching people who were falling was the one that could not smell. He came and stood. He said, you, you can't smell? Because I thought I knew her. With all the anger in me, I laid hands on her. He came under power. That was Wednesday. Thursday. I was just waiting to hear the testimony because I was touched that she could not smell. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. By Sunday, she testified that it was that Sunday as she was ushering people in, she began to smell perfume. Hallelujah. Guess what? Hey, bro. The man said, I heard that somebody was here that could not smell. Me too, I cannot smell. I said, were you in the service? He said, no. I said, hey, I'm me. That unction, that grace, I didn't even know how it came. I don't know how to call it back. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I don't know how it came. So I don't know how to conjure it. They just keep coming. God will visit you. What was he doing that Wednesday at home? We just decided to watch Asena. A man you. With his smelllessness. All his smell, smelllessness. No. <laughs> Praise God. He never knew that Jehovah was interested in that is matter. Imagine there would have been two people that would have been healed that day. Whenever the word is taught, power is always present. Missing Bible study moments is missing encounters with the healing power of God. That's why I know that Wednesday is healing service. Because of the, the intensity of word, we have time to worship. We have time to teach the word. Therefore, at the slightest pronoun, almost all the healings in this church happen on Wednesday. Two of us. Happen on Wednesday. I rest my case. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Make up your mind today. I will be, I, I will be, I will make myself available in midweek service. Go ahead and pray that prayer. I will make myself available. I will pay attention to midweek service, to Bible study meetings. I will be serious with my service to God. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love 
sins forgiven. You need Jesus in your life. You want to have a relationship with God. You need God to wipe your name from the book of death. Write your name in the book of life. Maybe you are a backslider. You want restoration. You need to be sure of your eternity. I want to pray for you. I don't want you to miss this moment. Wherever you are, please pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I repent of my sins. Forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Remove my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. I vow by your grace. That I will serve you for the rest of my life. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You just prayed that prayer. And you, you 